Well, coming on guys, well I'm absolutely thrilled and so excited because I bought a new bike. I've gone and done it. I've purchased myself a new motorcycle. This is a bit out of the blue. I'll tell you about it in a minute, but you're never going to guess what it is. Hang on a minute, you may have seen the thumbnail. You probably know what it is. <laughs> so here it is, a Kawasaki Ninja H2, the full fat H2. None of the SX business around here. Let's go for a spin. Here we go. <laughs> I've only got a Bolt H2. Oh, it's incredible. I've got to be so careful because this it's, it's, is a 2017 bike. It was registered in early 2018 and it's got two miles on it. It's been sat about for a year, more or less. Two miles. The tyres were covered in like a film of grease where it's just been sprayed in like protective coatings for that time and uh, I've got to try and run it in now <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable the quality of it is incredible it's not as wide as the H2SX it's, I thought it might be really uncomfortable but it's more comfortable than the GSXR I'm pleased to say I think it is first impression it's that noise <laughs> since I saw this bike and decided to buy it I, I've been a bit in a bit of a a hazy dream I'm like it doesn't seem real that I could possibly afford a H2 and it's just come out the blue I wasn't expecting to buy one I'll talk about why I've got this and everything which has happened but oh, it, oh I can't believe it <laughs> I've got a, a Ninja H2 I've bought this bike without never even I'm not sure if I've ever even sat on one let alone ridden one I think I've sat on one once I've never ridden, I've bought a H2 without even riding one. I mean, what, what is that all about? I and mean, why, why have I bought this? Am I crazy? Uh, I haven't got any other cameras set up, of course, because it's literally just turned out, it's just been delivered. So I've, I've rigged up no cameras on it. So you've just got the one camera for this one. But this is just a little introduction to my new bike. There's going to be all sorts happening with this. A build series, oh, I've got plans. As you can imagine, I've got plans. It's got a quick shifter and blipper, I think. I think the 2016 bikes came with the quick shifter and blipper. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to test it to be sure just yet. I'm just a little bit worried at the moment about those tyres because they've been sat about with a film of grease over them. I don't want to be that guy <laughs> that buys a new H2 and then crashes it instantly. Oh, what's that noise? Oh, what's that noise? That's not a nice noise. I love the clocks where they just light up with, with the with the colour that you're doing, so you can only see the colours that you're doing. What am I talking about? Okay, so why have I bought a H2? What the hell is going on? Well, it's a long story really. <laughs> why I've got this. It's a long story. I'll try and make it short. I've sold the I've sold the 500, the Supermoto, as you know, um, to buy a 690 Supermoto. Now I've been in talks with KTM, and basically I'm in a very incredibly lucky position where the channel is actually being taken sort of semi-seriously now by manufacturers. The next year they're willing to add me onto their press list, onto their long termers. So next season they're going to lend me a 690 SMCR to ride around on, to bring you guys some videos, bring you the whole ownership experience of that bike, do some mods to it, do the mods I was planning, but it will actually be KTM's bike. So I thought, why shell out and buy my own 690 this year, and I can, I'll have to just wait till next year when they get their press fleet in, and I'll have one for the season for testing. With the aim being, after that period, I buy the bike so that's that's the plan so the SMCR is on the back burner until next year start of next year I do have a, I'm borrowing one anyway for two weeks <laughs> in about a month so I'm gonna have one for two weeks to bring you some videos on it anyway but uh, yeah my own one is gonna be next year so that was that freed up a big lump of cash <laughs> for me to spend 
the Suzuki, I still haven't bought it. I've been messed about by Suzuki a little bit. I, I, I don't want to say too much, but we agreed a price on that bike back in November last year. And uh, basically I, I sold the Super Duke to buy it, to raise the money. And I've basically been awaiting an invoice from them ever since. So they haven't sent me an invoice. I went out on the bike last week, um, well, it was about, about three weeks ago now, actually. I rode down to Weymouth on it, had a great day out, just after I'd sold the Supermoto, got home. I thought, I better check the tax situation on this bike, because it's obviously it's all insured and taxed through Suzuki. So I checked the tax online, it's got no tax. The tax run out last month, and the same on the insurance database, it's not showing as being insured. So I can't ride that bike anymore because it's not taxed. I don't have the V5, obviously, because it's Suzuki's bike, it's, the title's in their name. So I've got a GSX-R in a garage I cannot ride with carbon wheels on and I can't ride it. How do I look? Oh, I look cool. How do I look in this mirror? Oh, look at that cool dude on the H2. Hang on a minute, that's me. Ooh, careful, Chopsy. Don't break your new bicycle. I just hope I'm not going to be too precious with it. Obviously, I'm going to be precious with it. <laughs> it's the most expensive purchase I've ever made, apart from my house. So I'm going to be precious with it, but I don't want to be too precious with it. But every time there's a little mark on it or, or anything, I'm, oh, I don't want to use that again, it's getting damaged. It's going to be used. That's what I've promised myself. There's no point buying this if you're not going to use it. So... I'll draw a limit to take it on track. I may take it on track one day. But I've got no plans to track it at the moment. You know, it's going to get modded. I'm going to do work on it. I'm going to take it apart. You know, that's, that's going to happen. It's not going to get abused. Well, maybe a little bit. But not overly abused. It's going to be fun. Oh, it's, oh, it changes direction. Nice. Remember the oily tyres. Tyre wear is a concern with one of these. <laughs> As you can imagine, apparently they like to eat back tyres. Who would have thought? I mean, the, the thing with the, you know, when if I do just get a, it lightly tweaked, just lightly, you know, power commander exhaust, you, you're knocking on the door of sort of 230 horsepower at the back wheel. That's a lot of power. I mean, the bike, these are you know, relatively heavy. I think these are about 225, 230 kilos. So, you know, they're, they're heavier than the GSX-R. I mean, this standard, I suspect the GSX-R might actually be slightly faster, to be perfectly honest. So I don't, I don't think these standard, you know, are, are the be all and end all of it. I think the way it makes its power, because it's got the supercharger, is obviously going to be what the differentia differ differentiator is compared to the GSX-R, which is obviously a bit more peaky. This is going to make that power probably you know, throughout the whole rev range. But I think out and out throttle on the stops, the GSX-R may even prove to be quicker until you do a bit of little, a little bit of tweaking. Those brakes are excellent. M50s on this with the full Brembo master cylinder set up. They're really nice. Come on, mate, on your Triumph. I'm up for some filtering, mate. Please, nobody damage my bicycle. Yeah, that's tight. Yeah. I must say a massive thank you to BE Moto who have now come a, become a channel sponsor. And they've actually done my insurance for the H2 through, through BE Moto, because I've had all sorts of insurance quotes on this bike. The worst quote I've had was with Carol Nash for 11,000 pounds. <laughs> I'm 47 with a clean license. And I've been riding since 1990 at a full bike license. And they want 11,000 pounds. Why don't they just not quote? And then they've had the cheek to ring me up and chase me if I want to go for it. <laughs> Do you want to go for the insurance, sir? Funnily enough, 
I don't. So yeah, massive thanks to BE Moto. So I haven't gone with Carol Nash. I've gone with BE Moto. 500 pound fully comp for the year on their titanium cover. And that even includes some mods. I've already got mods planned for this and they're already on the insurance. Power Commander, exhaust, uh, setup, dyno setup with that kit on it. Some carbon bits and bobs for it. So that's already all on my insurance already. 499 titanium cover. So massive thanks to BE Moto for sorting the insurance out and becoming a channel sponsor. So big up the BE Moto. Look. Look at how lovely it is. Oh. So yeah, so I've got to run this in. I think it's a 600 mile. Well, it's normally 600 miles, isn't it, to the first service. Don't know if this is any different. Need to check. I actually don't know much about these bikes. <laughs> I've bought a bike and I don't really know much about it at all. I've never done that. This is, this is, you know, I've, just been, I've been thinking of one. I've always loved the H2. I've always loved them ever since they came out. But I don't know much about them because it was a bike I thought I could never afford. So why look into them too much, if you know what I mean? Because it's not a bike I can ever buy. But uh, now I've got one, I better start looking into it a bit. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to wake up in a minute and be like, oh, do you know, what? I actually had a dream I had a H2. About six months ago, I had a dream I had a H2 and I really liked it. <laughs> Maybe that's subliminal messages making me buy one because of that dream I had. Maybe it's Kawasaki planting these subliminal messages into my head to buy a H2. But yeah, I had a dream, I had one. And now I've got one and it, it just feels very dreamlike. Oh my word. Pinch me somebody. I love it already. I was a bit uncertain. I've, I've had sort of buyer's remorse all week. I've paid £200 deposit and I've had like five days to to go back on the deal and lose my, lose my deposit. And I've been close a couple of times. I was just like, can I spend that much money on a bike? Can I spend that much money? I haven't even ridden one. I don't think I've even sat on one. Can I do it? And I've nearly backed out a couple of times. But now, riding this here, I'm over the moon that I went through with it and I've done it. It's incredible. <laughs> I can't believe this is mine. Absolutely incredible. I've got a Ninja H2. The actual rear tail of these is adjustable. It's got like that, that seat can move back and forth to it. So the seat can literally push it against your ass. So you've got that behind you when you're accelerating to, to hold you on the back of the bike. So you can adjust all that. I'll show you all that when I walk around in a minute. I'll pull over in a minute. I've got my good camera with me. We walk around the bike and I'll introduce you to a new member of the team. <laughs> there she is. What an absolute beauty. So I'm just outside Lumi's and it's shut and there's still lots of cars going by. Uh, yeah, it's an incredible looking bit of kit, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> I'm absolutely in love with it. I am in love with it. Just the whole quality of the bike is just exceptional. One thing I read about, I've not even played with yet, but these are adjustable. These whole sections move back and forward so you can get it right up against your bum to sort of support you when you open it up. So you sit in that little area there and these move back and forward. <laughs> oh, it's just so nice. So nice. That's the, the boot, yeah, the, the, that's the inlet for the boost and the supercharger's the other side of that. So that is where your inlet is for the boost. And apparently, on the inlets, only one of these is real. Only that one is a, the real scoop. That one is a fake. Only the H2R has that as a scoop, apparently. But it's just absolutely gorgeous. Little details like this little area here. Just I mean that paint. It's just lovely. Let's turn it on. It's turning me on. Clocks. I've had to play around with the clocks. There's not much information on there. She is supercharged. Olin's, Olin's preload adjuster. Olin's clickables in there. There'll be a preload and rebound adjustment. This tire's a bit of a worry. It's just slippery as hell here. Where the bike's just been sat for a year in the showroom, spraying grease onto it, it's all gone on the tire. I've tried to clean out the baby wipe, but it's still really slippery. So I've got to be really careful around the corners. 
LED back end of course, LED lighting everywhere of course, single sided, single sided swinging arm, all beautifully machined, all of that, absolutely exceptional. I love these little inlets here, these little scooped inlets with the little green fleck on there, I love this little green fleck. Beautiful, it's a piece of engineering, that's what I love about it. It was made as a demonstration of what Kawasaki can do. A bit like the Bugatti Veyron, sort of a, a showcase of their technology and what they can do. And it's a hell of a machine. What's best about it? What's best about it is it's mine. It's all mine. Oh, what a lucky bastard. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, all right. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. Oh, <laughs> oh shit.